Hello, everyone, and welcome to another evening of Chillicothe Paints Baseball here at VA Memorial Stadium. I'm Doug Kimsey. I'm joined this evening by Marty Dunn. Marty, the longtime uh, graybeard, I suppose we'll call you, been in this league since day one and Paints uh, assistant coach. Uh, reflect a little bit, Marty, on uh, how things are going so far for the Paints so far. We've made it through about 24 games, and uh, so far, so good. Well, we started out struggling a little bit as uh – Unfortunate that we had our first opening season loss of the year, but since then we've started coming together. Players are fulfilling their roles and, and getting comfortable with their expectations, and I uh, feel pretty good about where we are right now. We have a long way to go, but uh, things are starting to shape up. Seems to be a multifaceted team, Marty. Uh, we've been getting some pretty darn good starting pitching. The bullpen's really coming together, and then uh, the hitting has been really uh, pretty pretty good as well as well as the defense. Well, this is probably is most uh, the most versatile team that we've had. Uh, people are familiar with the Gator McBrides and the Mitch Houses and the Scott Pannonis and uh, big names that had to carry us. But we have a team now where on any given night, uh, any one of these guys can step up and do the job for us. Jamie Keefe not with us tonight. Jamie at the wedding of uh, Megan and Chance Melvin. So congratulations to the Melvins. And um, Marty, you've been with Jamie now for three seasons. How's the uh, new kid on the block uh, coming along as far as uh, learning the managerial ropes? Uh, I think he's doing a great job. I mean, his first full-time managerial position, and he helped me last year when uh, Roger went down and I finished out the season. So he has a firm understanding of, of the game and how to handle people. He's been in, in the game for such a long time and had several different types of managers. And Jamie is, is pulling a little bit of something something from each one of those and, and, and creating himself. So uh, it's going along fine. I think uh, our turnaround and the progression of this team is due to him. Yeah, the paint started 0-2, Marty, and uh, really looked uh, like they weren't quite ready for the season to start. But since April has kicked in, the paints are 14-7, and open tonight's play, just uh, tied with Canton. Can you see this maybe being a, a two or three dog uh, race down the wire with Canton and, uh, of course, London, Johnstown? Well, so far we've played everybody in our division, and our division stacks up pretty good. Uh, I think it's going to come down to probably the top three pitchers uh, on each team and how they fare as the season continues to go. Uh, it's, it, I don't see it right now as a runaway race for anyone. Uh, Richmond, um, who got us uh, the opening series, Richmond uh, has a powerful offense. Uh, Kalamazoo, uh, new just starting players trying to fill themselves out. Andy uh, McCauley over there uh, has a way of finding talent. So it's a long way from being a one, two, or three team race just yet. I think a lot of teams are trying to fill out what they have, trying to uh, establish roles for the individual players that they have. And I think uh, you can feel, have a little bit better feel once we get to the all-star break and, and see who it's who has gotten the pitching, who has a strong defense, and who can get the offense going on a consistent basis. Speaking of defense, uh, you've seen some nice double play combinations over the years, coaching high school ball and being in this league now for nine seasons. But what about the play of Dave Dalton and Kevin Conniger to date? Um, wow, that's yeah. about how I can say. You know, those are they're two of the best that I have seen uh, in this league anywhere. Um, uh, you have you have arm strength, you have quickness, you have knowledge of the game. Uh, they're pretty spectacular to watch, and, and that's one thing that I think has turned around our, our game. It has been our defense. You know, we won several games simply because they were there to uh, get us out of the inning with the double play. I mean, our pitching staff knows that the only thing they got to do is get a get a ground ball, and if it's anywhere close, those guys are going to get the job done. Absolutely. And tonight, uh, the Paints will throw lefty Greg Kish, and Greg really has hit the ground running as a professional. Uh, he's had four good outings, and tell us a little bit about the rookie left-hander and, and what you've seen out of him so far. Well, uh, Greg has about an average fastball, but he has a nice uh, changeup and a, and a sl uh, slider or more of a cutter. And uh, when he can get those going and, and get them going early, you know, he makes it difficult for the opposing team. Uh, if, if you see him getting out there and getting a lot of ground balls early, um, that shows he's going to probably be pretty effective. Uh, when he starts getting the hard hit fly balls early in the ball game, uh, that's because he's not hitting his spots as he should. But if he stays around the plate early there, he can, you know, he can be someone to have to deal with throughout the game. Saw Roger Hanner's in the clubhouse before the game. Is he still giving you a lot of grief? 
Well, I think that's the only reason Roger comes around is to give me some grief. I mean, we've done that so much for the last uh, nine years that uh, old habits, I guess, are hard to break. But uh, uh, Roger's presence uh, and his understanding of the game is, is very comforting, I know, to the staff and, and to the players that have been around him for a while. You have to remember guys like Dalton who were here several years ago. You got Blank, you got Woody. So a lot of those guys uh, enjoy seeing Roger around, and Roger loves being at the ballpark, and he's always got something that you can learn from him. I mean, uh, he's he, he understands it so well that, you know, sitting in the stands, he can see one thing that a guy's going, doing and, and pass that along as far as trying to you know, trying to work out a situation that we have. But so he's invaluable to us still, even though he's he's not there in a uniform. Uh, Roger is Roger, and Roger is baseball here in Chillicothe. Very well put. Marty Dunn, uh, coach, thank you very much, and let's go get a win tonight. All right, that sounds good to me. We just want to start up another streak. Absolutely. The Paints and the Springfield Capitals coming to you momentarily, but first let's take a break, and we'll come back and talk with rookie right-handed pitcher Denny McGee down Denny McGee segment five four three two one welcome back folks I'm joined uh, by paints rookie right-hander Denny McGee Denny uh, the newest paint welcome aboard Denny thank you and uh, Denny is uh, now one and one got the victory last evening uh, over the uh, who did we beat last night? Spring, not Springfield. Uh, River, City. River City. Thank you very much. Just seeing if you were paying attention. Denny, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what it's like to make that adjustment from college ball to the professional ranks. Well, right now I'm just trying to get used to the, uh, the batters take different approaches right now. Like metal bats, people are trying to hit home runs and everything. Wood bats, these guys are just staying back on the ball. But I'm not getting as many strikeouts, and I just got to make that adjustment, try to get more ground balls, stuff like that. Right. And Denny comes to us from Ohio University, but you're a Washington, Pennsylvania uh, product. Tell us uh, how you uh, decided to become a Bobcat and come to Ohio. Well, Coach Joe Carbone just saw me one day and uh, offered me a scholarship. He was one of the, the few people that did. I figured I might as well go down to OU. And it was a great experience. Outstanding. And uh, Denny was a nine-game winner this year, 12-game? Ten. Ten-game winner uh, for the Bobcats. And uh, I understand that you were recruited by Roger Hanners and uh, Jamie Keefe as well. But how did it come about, uh, Denny, that you ended up uh, wearing a paint uniform? Well, they just told me that uh, after one game that I would have a spot on the team if I, if I wanted it. And after the season, I f nothing happened with the draft, so I figured I'd come out here and play. Denny, of course, uh, this is a player's uh, league for uh, development, and uh, every year the Paints get a handful of players signed. So, I mean, is that an aspiration? Is that uh, something that hopefully is in your future? I mean, I think everyone that plays in this league, that's their aspiration. But I don't know. You just got to see what comes about. Right. And so far, uh, so good. Paints on top. So it's, it's got to be good playing for a winner. I understand that the Bobcats struggled a little this spring. Were you guys ever in the MAC race? Yeah, we were. I mean, we made the MAC tournament again. We, we lost in the tournament, but uh, coming here, I mean, it's pretty fun. We won nine of our last 11 games, and uh, it's been a good time. And I understand that you uh, had about a month off uh, between uh, the time you ended your college season. Yeah. How are you adapting to that? Well, I'm just trying to get back in the groove, find my arm slot, and hopefully not walk as many batters in the next few outings. Been that unlucky 13, walking 13 innings, but you're going to put that behind you. Yeah. Tell me a little bit, Denny, about uh, this uh, motion of yours. I guess we could call it three-quarter, or uh, oh, would you have a term for it? I don't know. Everyone just says I'm just real herky-jerky, yeah. and uh, it's like a sidearm type deal. And uh, why did you go to that, and um, you feel like it's uh, working well for you? Yeah, I'm a freshman year in college, I sort of got hit very hard when I threw overhand. So sophomore year, I dropped down. I was more successful. What's uh, your philosophy? What's your out pitch? How do you like to set up a hitter? Just uh, fastballs that go down and in, get ground balls, sliders away. How's that uh, paint defense? Uh, what about that infield? Have you ever pitched uh, with uh, good defense like that? No, nothing like this. That's, that's the main difference playing in college in here. Like I get ground balls, I'm like, oh, that's a hit, and I'll turn around, and these guys are just making great plays. Absolutely. Denny McGee, uh, welcome aboard. Great to have you. That's Chillicothe Paints rookie right-hander Denny McGee. And that'll be a wrap for the Paints pregame show. Coming up, the Chillicothe Paints will entertain the Springfield Capitals on the Adelphia Game of the Week. Please stay tuned.
Hello, everyone, and welcome again to another exciting paint baseball season on Adelphia Media Services. I'm Doug Kimsey. I'll be talking with Jamie Keefe, the paints manager. And it's been said that time begins on opening day. Well, Jamie, it's time to get it going here. Congratulations on uh, the new position. And I know that opening day is a special day, and uh, this is your third year with us uh, back in 99. It uh, looked like your career was over. Tell us a little bit about your thoughts as you came to Chillicothe in 1999. Well, 99 was a little bit different season for me than any other season. I had had a, uh, what I thought was a career-ending injury on my elbow, and uh, after a long rehab and getting everything done, I decided to give it one last shot and came back here, and it was pretty emotional for me when uh, opening day came on in 99. It was a great season. Uh, you know, I had about 20 games under my belt and decided to hang them up, and since then, I've been coaching and came out playing a little bit last year, but now the decision's been made to uh, manage full-time, and here we are. Yeah, you, Jamie, you go from uh, being a player to a coach, a player coach, a player coach manager, so you've really covered all the bases. Uh, tonight's got to be special. Maybe some butterflies tonight, since you are the man taking over for the legend, Roger Hanners. Well, I guess I was all right till we got to the ballpark today, but uh, just like you said, you know, I got big shoes to fill, and I'm very excited for the opportunity here in Chillicothe, and this is something I've been wait waiting for for quite quite some time now. And now that I get the shot, I'm really excited to be here. A little bit of butterflies. I think I'd be crazy if I didn't have them, but uh, really excited to be out here tonight. And can't wait for the game. Absolutely, and uh, let's talk a little bit about this 2001 paint paints team. Of course, everyone this time of year is a contender. Everyone looks good, as they say on paper, but you have to get it done between the lines. Why don't you go around the uh, infield, uh, maybe the starting rotation, and tell us a little bit about uh, some of the guys that we're going to see out there tonight. All right, well, I think, uh, just like you said, Doug, everybody's an All-American team on paper right now, but uh, when, when it comes 7 o'clock, that's when, that's when things count. And we're really confident with... Uh, with the team we put on the field. You and I have talked before, and I've told you so many times that I really believe in building the, my team up the middle, and I start right behind the dish with Chris Paulson, our returning catcher, who's in his own right pretty much a coach for us. You know, he runs, helps run the pitching staff with me, and i uh, got Chris Chris right there behind the plate, and you go to David Dalton and Kevin Conifer up the middle, two veterans that have been around the game for quite, a, quite some time now. I think they got eight or nine years of experience in between them and pro ball, and uh, we really feel really confident with those two guys up the middle, and you go to center field with Joe Calameco, uh, most of, mostly everybody remembers Joe had a great season in right field for us last year. In 99 season, he had a good, good season for us in center. And we feel real strong with our defense up the middle. And you go to the corners with Justin Graham in left and Matt McKay in right. We don't feel that we're going to give up too many extra base hits with the speed we have in the outfield and the arms we have in the outfield. Um, we also uh, are really confident in our two guys that are, you know, we got one returner and Phil Warren coming back to play, to play first base for us. You know, Phil did a great job for us with about 100 at bats last year. Uh, put some good power numbers up and defensively he does a good job. And we go to our rookie third baseman with Radimus Torres who played at Ohio Dominican. We look for big things from Radimus. He's, uh, he's had a great spring for us and came in here. He wants to learn. He's really what I call big eared. He just open ears and wants to learn every day. And Gator's been working with him at the plate. I've been working with him defensively. And we're really confident with the defense note there. Uh, we go to our bench. We have two lefties coming off the bench uh, for pinch hitters. We've got two righties coming off the bench for pinch hitters. We're really excited about these guys that aren't even going to be in the starting lineup tonight. We feel that they could play for just about any, any team in this league right now. And, uh, starting with our pitchers, we got Rick Flank going tonight, our number one. Uh, Ricky came in, had a great spring for us, threw the ball real well. We go to Sean Bush as our number two. Jason Harrison's our number three. Greg Kish, our number four. And Justin Robertson, our number five. We feel really confident in these five starters right now. Our bullpen is uh, tailed, but tailed up by uh, Woody Follenkamp, who we all know has had a couple of great years here in Chillicothe as our closer, and we look for big things from him and everybody in the bullpen. Very good, Jamie. Uh, you mentioned uh, Radimus down there in third base and taking over for the Sarge. I understand Chance Melvin, who has entered retirement. Tell us what uh, Chance is doing these days. Well, Chance is working for the Secret Service. He is a drill instructor for the Secret Service Agency, and uh, he's, he's loving his job. And, uh, he called me this morning to wish me good luck, told me how much he was, uh, he didn't miss it until this morning when he knew it was opening day, but uh, it's one of those things that he's had to deal with, and he's having a great career, hopefully, in the Secret Service here for the next some, so many years, or however many he wants him to be, uh, but like I said, he called me this morning and wished me good luck, and wanted the guys to know that he wished good luck, and we're happy for him and where he's gone, but Rodimus has got some big shoes to fill over there at third base defensively and offensively. It's going to be a surprise tonight. I don't think Roger Hanners is lurking about, but uh, the Paints will retire their fifth number uh, in history tonight as I look out at the field. Nick House, 27, uh, Brian Tolberg, 22, Scott Fanoni, 30, and Gator McBride, 20. And of course, 
Roger. He has just meant so much to this organization. To me personally, I'm sure to you personally too. Here's a chance for you to maybe give uh, Roger uh, some kind words and what he's meant to you. Well, I don't think you can really put into words what Roger means to me. He was uh, a great manager as a player to play under. Um, but I've learned so much, so very much from him in the last two years. It's just been a very exciting time in my life to be able to come here and work under Roger and the whole Hanners family. And Roger's just made the transition for me so easy and helping me do the recruiting and getting these players out here and helping me with the pitchers during uh, during the spring training. He's just been so great to me. And uh, like I said, you know, he's the one that really um, solidified this position for me here as a manager. And I, just, I take my hat off to him, and he's going to be missed around here on the field. Uh, but he's behind the scenes. Don't think he's not still working. He's behind the scenes doing his job, uh, helping me out, getting players in here when we need somebody else to come in. If we have an injury or somebody's not performing well, he's still doing his job. But to me, there's no better number to be retired than number 50 up there on that wall. And uh, he is the dean. I know I got big shoes to fill, but I'm very happy and pleased that I got the position. But it's all because of Roger. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, good luck tonight, and um, go get him. Thanks, Doug. We'll be back in just a moment. We've got Chris Paulson, the paint starting catcher. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, Chris, by Chris Paulson. Chris, thanks for joining us tonight. And first things first, I guess, is I understand that you are now among the married. Congratulations. That's right. I got married this, this past October, October 21st, my wife, Ann. Uh, unfortunately, she's at home now, but uh, she's very understanding. She is. She's got to be a saint to put up with you and uh, this, <laughs> this activity. That's very much an understatement. Chris, uh, this is your third season uh, in Chillicothe. I'm sorry, uh, second, second season in Chillicothe, third season of pro ball. Uh, and at the ripe old age of 24, you gained something of a reputation of being a student in the game. Right. Uh, tell me a little bit about that, and maybe do you have coaching and managing in your future? Right, well, that's basically my idea of what I want to do in the future. I, I've told myself many times, I've, I've explored different avenues, both in school and, and just in the community itself, trying to decide you know, what I want to do. What can I see myself doing 20 years from now? And as of right now, the only thing I can see myself doing 20 years from now is rolling out of bed and coming to a baseball field. Very good. And, uh, of course, this Paints team here tonight and this season, uh, we're very high about our pitching. We don't necessarily have the dominating starter, uh, but we feel like that the depth is going to be strong this year. Right. Some of your thoughts on uh, this uh, starting rotation and even go through the bullpen for me. Well, the biggest thing I like about our pitching staff right now is it's basically designed around the strength of our team. The strength of our team really, from what I see, is our defense especially in the middle infield and the outfield. So what we've pretty much put together, pitching-wise, is guys you're going to throw ground ball. We don't have, the, like I said, we don't have the dominating, overpowering strikeout guy. We've got a lot of guys who are going to throw ground balls, and that's all we need, quick games. And uh, let's talk a little bit about tonight's starter, Rick Blank. Rick, of course, is very familiar, a third-year player here in Chillicothe. Uh, what does Rick do well, and uh, how do you uh, like to help him out? Right. Well, the thing about that I like about Rick is, like I said, he's been around. Like you said, he, he's he's had his pro experience. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, there's there's not going to be any question in his mind when he steps on the field. Whereas some of these young guys, you know, you really don't know what to expect when they get out there. You've seen him in practice. You've seen him throwing against our hitters, but it's a totally di different atmosphere once they flip the lights on here at VA. It's a totally different atmosphere, and I just I know what I'm going to get from Rick. The biggest thing he does well is he keeps the ball down, spots his fastball well, and he's got a cut fastball that's not a it's not a strikeout pitch. It's one of those, like I was talking about, a ground ball pitch, a ball that you just can't hit hard. And then we follow up game two of the series with Sean Bush, another familiar guy. Right. Sean Bush, 4-0 here at VA with a 170 ERA, so he's had a lot of success at home. Uh, what do you see out of Sean here in the second go-around? Well, really and truly, what the thing I noticed about him coming back this year is he's lost a little bit of weight. You can tell he really worked worked harder during the offseason, uh, got himself both mentally and physically prepared to come out here. Now, what I've seen is his velocity is about the same. He might have picked up a little bit of velocity, but he still spot the changeup all over the place. And that's, that's really his pitch that, we, that I like to use with him because that's what he has the most confidence in. He can throw it anywhere he wants to at any count. So it really kind of keeps hitters off balance. Then there's a, a lefty in our rotation this year, first lefty in a couple of seasons. Right. And a young man from, uh, I believe, your alma mater. That's right. The Western... Uh, West Florida. West Florida, thank you. That's Tell right. me a little bit about that young man and uh, what we can expect from him. Well, he, kind of like most of this club, is a bit of a character as well. Um, he's one of those that when I talk sorry, to him... I'm sorry, we're talking Greg Kish. Right, Greg right. Kish, exactly. He's he's one that I, along with the other guy that I brought with me from West Florida, Midland, 
both kind of character guys. Love to play, you know, just have, here to have a good time, basically. And it's, you know, being here is a great experience for those guys. He's one of those, like I said, is a rookie, no professional experience, so you really don't know what you're going to get out of him until you actually put him in a situation. You put him thrown to, to hitters, like I said, with a crowd and that sort of thing, because you know, our crowds here can, can be a little uh, loud especially if you're a visiting club. So we just want to wait to see how, how that's going to be. I don't want to say too much about him yet. Because I just want to see how things pan out. I do understand that, being a rookie and all. Right. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the man of the hour tonight, Roger Hanners. And uh, how did you first uh, get to know Roger? And uh, was he the man that brought you to Chillicothe? And maybe uh, pay a little tribute to Roger on his night. Here. Well, he was the man who brought me here. And, and to be honest with you, I, I can't thank him enough. I was, I was just released from the Braves. I think I'd been released during spring training. And I'm trying to think about it. I, I'd been home maybe a week, and I got a call from him. I called him up and said, hey, this is Roger Hunters. You have the Chillicothe Paints, which at the time I had no idea. I'd never heard of the Chillicothe. I didn't know Chillicothe existed. Even the Frontier League itself, I didn't know that much about. So uh, I, I had some other things in the works. I had some other tryouts I was going to with the Northern League and the Atlantic League and that sort of thing. So I told him I, I pretty much was straight with him. I said, I got a couple other things I'm working on right now, but uh, I'll be back here home in a, in a week or so, and I'll give you a call and let you know how things go. And he was very, very good about that. It was not a problem to him at all. So I went down and had a couple workouts with these different clubs. I actually ended up uh, getting drafted in the Atlantic League by a club there. Went to spring training with them. I was in spring training with them. I actually, I called him and said, hey, you know, I, I got picked up. I don't know. You know the, the extent of it yet, if I'm if it's finalized or what, but you know, I'm going to be going to spring training with it. So I went to spring training, uh, got released there the last day before they reported, which was kind of tough at the time because I was felt very confident about making the club. So I get back home, just rush back home, which was it was down in uh, Central Florida, so it was about an eight-hour drive for me. So I rush, rush, rush home. Finally get there. Finally. Uh, Finally get home and get set up, and I called him back immediately. I said, "Hey, do you still have a spot?" Because mm -hmm. I was I was dying then. I didn't know if I was going to have a chance to play. It had been a few weeks, and he said, "Well, we still have a spot. You know, come come and let me look at you." So I came up here, and he actually signed me the first day. I came out and had a decent round of batting practice, and caught a few pitchers and signed me. And one of the most pleasurable experiences, I guess you'd say, in in my experience in professional baseball is being here with him because. You know, he brings, he brings a lot to the table, whether it be experience as a coach, as a manager, as a player. He's just a great guy to have around. Teaching all these young guys especially. He's really good with the younger players. Absolutely. Chris, we wish you and the Page nothing but the best in 2001. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. We'll be back uh, momentarily with Brian Wickline, the general manager of the Chillicothe Paints. Brian, you're an old hand at these opening days now. How many is it for you? This is my ninth year. Um, Sixth as a general manager. So. And of course, opening day is always special. It's a lot of work, but it's got to be very gratifying once uh, everything comes together and you get a packed house out here and you guys always put on a great show. That Really, to tell you the truth, that's the only thing that gets me through this is, is knowing that at some point it's going to be to the point where you need it to be. Uh, this is all a, a culmination of, of, of after our last game last year, uh, August 30th, August 31st, we started getting prepared for tonight. Uh, it, it is a year-long, uh, um, sometimes struggle uh, of getting it together, but uh, we feel like we've got a special program uh, for tonight and, uh, and look forward to uh, even winning the, ba the baseball game too. So uh, we're looking forward to tonight, and uh, I hope that uh, uh, the fans enjoy it too. Brian, the uh, Paints have something every night of the year, which is a tribute certainly to your staff. And uh, fans could come out and they can look forward to usually walking away with some sort of giveaway. Uh, if you'd like to, take the next few moments here and tell us about some of the upcoming promotions and giveaways. Well, uh, tonight is fireworks, and we have three a year. Uh, opening night this, this year, our July 4th will be July 3rd. We'll have a July 3rd fireworks celebration, and then uh, I believe August 21st, Fan Appreciation Night, we'll have fireworks. Uh, scattered in through there, the 42 home games that we have, um, we're giving away magnetic schedules as of uh, tomorrow night, which is Thursday. Uh, Friday, uh, we're going to give away to the first 500 kids 15 and under fishing poles, rods and reels. Uh, so, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, 
adds to the enjoyment of, of, of uh, what you're coming here to expect in Paints Baseball. Throughout the year, uh, we're going to do bats. We're, we're going to do um, team photos. You know, all the stuff that's norm that people have come to expect, and then a little bit extra. We're going to have a NASCAR night this year. Uh, we're going to have uh, a Ronald McDonald House benefit night where all the proceeds uh, benefit Ronald McDonald House in July. Uh, so a lot of different things, but also some of the things that you've come to expect also in the way of giveaways. One of the centerpieces tonight, Brian, in addition to the fireworks post game and hopefully another Paints victory, is the retirement of yet another Paints uh, number, uh, number 50, Roger Hanners. And uh, boy, I know he means a lot to you personally, and uh, you spent a lot of hours with that man. Uh, tell us some of your thoughts tonight as we honor Roger. Well, to surprise some people that wouldn't know this, he, Roger Hanners, the one that hired me, uh, hired me as an intern in 1994. And uh, he is very special, and, and uh, I hope I can keep it together when we do this. But uh, early in February, earlier this year, we, we uh, retired Brian Tolberg, and uh, he was uh, player in 90, 1994, and uh, now obviously is with the San Diego Padres. Now, tonight, we're going to honor number 50. And, as Chris Hanner says, he is Paints Baseball, Roger Hanners is. And so we're going to, to uh, tribute him the best way that we can, put his number on the right field wall along with the other numbers, and no one will ever wear the number 50 again. Uh, that's kind of the, the way that baseball is, and the best way to tribute somebody is to retire their number, and that's what we're going to do tonight. Roger Hanners has been here since day one, uh, and he will continue to be in the front office. He has been in the front office from here on out uh, since he's been with the Paints. It's just people don't see him as a director of baseball operations. They see him as the manager. So uh, even though you won't see number 50 sitting here in the dugout, he will be in the stands, and he will be around still continuing to find talent for this team. Brian, thank you very much, and uh, let's go get a victory tonight, and uh, we'll follow this up with Paints Baseball from VA Memorial Stadium. This is Doug Kimsey.